For all of the lives that are taken, they can never be replaced. But still, Jaja chose to remember my face. Though I never lived like he wanted, I'm still mindful of what he taught me. So now I beg and plead, I'm on my bending knees. Cause Father, you rescued me. I've got the slow. Thank you for tuning in to Coco Chats with me, your host, Marion Dozier. Today of CocoWire.net, the website that provides news, events, and useful information to communities of color in Palm Beach County. That's C-O-C-O-Wire.net if you want to know what's happening here with us in Palm Beach County. And as we do on this show and on CocoWire.net, we will continue to tell the stories of our communities of the African diaspora, which, as you are aware, I'm sure, are African Americans, Caribbean Blacks, and Native Africans, so that we all get a better sense of how rich and interesting our communities are. And especially now, there's a lot going on nationally, lots going on across the state, lots going on here in Palm Beach County. And indeed, here in Palm Beach County, the pandemic data keeps rising, the protests keep happening, and coming up in just a few weeks on July 20th will be the last day to register to vote here in Palm Beach County in the upcoming primary elections on August 18th. The general election follows on November the 3rd, and registration before that date must be done by October 5th. And remember, everyone, nearly 100 people are running for elective offices that represent Palm Beach County at the county, state, and federal levels right now. So, but what do protesting and voting have in common? Change, ladies and gentlemen. Think of how the things happening now have affected you, have affected your family, our communities, our county, our country. And think about how if we vote, we can make change as well. Now, today's guest knows a lot about change. He's been pushing for it for years, even though he's just 23 years old. Bryce Graham is here on the show again for a third time, but this time he's alone um, since George Floyd's killing on May 25th, and that's because he's involved in, you know, well, in change. He's participated in or organized protests around the county, and this past weekend, he spoke at a sit-in held at the West Palm Beach Police Department. And his speech was not preceded by a raised fist or a frowned face. His speech opened with prayer. That's because young prophet Bryce Graham is a longtime spiritual leader here in Palm Beach County. He received his first ministerial robe as a two-year-old And at the tender age of nine, the title of prophet was bestowed upon him by Bishop Burley Knowles of Breakthrough International Christian Center in Miami. And over his young life, he's been called a 10-year-old preaching machine. He's been called a wonder boy preacher. And as he's aged, he's also appeared on spiritual TV shows and pulpits and on daises around the country. Currently, he is the Palm Beach County representative for the Reverend Al Sharpton's National Action Network. And in 2018, the Trayvon Martin Foundation recognized him with one of its Trailblazer Awards for his contributions to social justice and minority empowerment. Now, did we say he's only 23 years old? (laughs) Prophet Bryce Graham, welcome to Coco Chats. Yay! God bless you. Yes, yes. But at least this time you're alone. Absolutely. 
so now, so now we can learn a little bit more about you and what you do and why you do it. So before we um, talk about, you know, your efforts to make change, you know, going on now, tell us how all of this started. How did you become so churchy, so young? <laughs> And don't be offended by that remark, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it was there in you. I mean, from the time you, I'm, from the time before you even started walking, probably. Wow, that is so interesting. Yeah. Were you raised in the church? Uh, raised in the church. Uh, family went to church, everything. Your family went to church? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah, we did. We do. Yeah. Uh, still do. Uh, so, so, it, you know, that kind of helped as well. Yeah. Yeah, being uh, cultivated in the church. So, I don't know, what grabs you so much about spirituality and faith? Is there anything in particular, or is it just that it is who you are? It is who I am, and um, I believe that, you know, God is real. You know, he does all things for a reason and for a purpose. Yeah. And um, we just have to figure out what our purpose is and move in it. And he is all in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's astounding. <laughs> So tell us how, you know, as I said earlier, you know, you, you work with um, uh, the Reverend Al Sharpton, Trayvon Martin's organization awarded you, and there was another organization that gave you um, an award last week, um, not last week, last last year, Marion. Um, so, but tell us, I mean, I guess I'm trying to understand what it is about spirituality and faith that has grabbed you. What is it, you know, because you, you know, you've been at this for a very long time. And I guess maybe what I should add, instead of asking, because maybe you don't know the answer to that, you know, God was just in you. But well, I, I, I think I can answer that. Oh, I think, okay. I think that faith and, and the justice piece goes hand in hand. Yeah. Oh. And, and, and justice. Right and wrong. Uh, not just for uh, black people, but for all people. And so, um, you know, I think I think it goes hand in hand. And, and it, it helps me fight this battle that we are currently in. Uh, it continues to face. But it wasn't hard for you to, like, you know, to leave the church and to go outside and be like. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Prayer has a place in all of and those. All things, um, you know, and so, and that's, that's why I always talk about people finding their place, finding their life, finding their purpose, um, because it all ties in. It's all part of uh, the greater good, the common uh, goal. But even, so even as you participate in these protests, and you've been doing it a long time, this George Floyd thing is not new for you because you were there what was the young man's name that was killed by the Palm Beach uh, Gardens police officer? Yeah, yeah, you were. In, I remember that's how I I first met, met you um, was was during was during that. But I'm just wondering, how do you leave the church and then go outside and say, uh uh-uh, uh, this ain't going like this anymore? I mean, how do you? What is where does that come from? In the hood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But, the street. But, but yeah. The church and, and, and the street. And, 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 and the, the world. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, well, the secular world. Um, and, and really taking it on is just a step of boldness. Yeah. You know, some people, they, they'd rather sit in the background than take the forefront. And all too long we've had people be silent and not sit, take a stand in the forefront. Right. Um, 
and it must be a balance for you because I still don't understand how, you know, you still pray and pray and pray. I mean, you haven't picked up a rock. You haven't started frowning or anything. You haven't started cussing at anybody. No. But just, but you, you still, you know, you maintain, I guess, the balance. Absolutely. But, um, but how, how do you do that without, how do you not get upset and want to, you know, uh, throw a rock? And get benefit. It's all in the spirit of, of not the king. Not the king is a non-violent leader. But look what he got accomplished. Look, you know, although he got killed. Yeah. You know, his name is respected. And although you, you didn't see the forward movement, um, his, his, his impact and his approach uh, changed the world. Yeah, and I you think know, I was. Yes, I think I was listening more to Malcolm to uh, Malcolm X, <laughs> and I was listening to MLK. <laughs> 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 that was only a joke, ladies and gentlemen, only a joke. But um, have you ever been mistreated by the police? Um, on several on several occasions. You have. But you you weren't saying I can't breathe. No, nah, I wasn't saying I can't breathe. Well, just give us an tell us one story. I mean, and and I don't know if this one story that you might tell is it something that changed you or, you know, strengthened you or. Well, absolutely. Well, the one occasion that I did have was uh, I won't name the department. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> balance, okay. Balance again. <laughs> I had a little fun, and as I'm leaving uh, where I was, the officer pushed me. And pushed I, you? I pushed me, and uh, you know, I we got into it and whatnot, and uh, that didn't end so well. But it made me wake up to what I really have been doing. Um, it, what do you mean? Mm. Um, so uh, I got that out of that experience, and it plugged into now. So now I can look at you know the ins and the outs of what we need to reform the police department because uh, these interactions are, are all too real. Uh, it's not just in, in Palm Beach County; it's all over. The, all it's over all the yeah, and I think it's not just with black people either, because I think that right. might be part of the reason why we're seeing so much support. Absolutely. You know, yeah, from absolutely. from them, because you know. Um, Dr. King said that we all caught up in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny, and what affects one di- directly affects all indirectly. So I believe it is all affecting us, but in different ways. Mm. What do you want to see happen in terms of change? I mean, I don't know if you've got a you know a list of things that you would like to see that are systemic, or if it's just one big thing. Or give me a sense of of, of you know why you are so involved, and not just at the church. Because it, it had no place for us in it. And so what I want to see is the system be eradicated from the top down. And it w- that change comes when we uh, take a view of our moral conscience and, and push a moral perspective 
rather than pushing our own agendas. Mm. So give me a sense of what that would, you know, what that might look like to you. I mean, I don't know if you got it. I'm still trying to. You're guess. trying to. Okay. You know, we're still, it's, it's fresh. It's, Hello. It's, 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 it's uh, living kind of in the moment. Right. Um, and, and still trying to digest all that has happened. And really, quite frankly, what does real change look like? Um, you know, I think change might look like when you start talking about restorations that would set our people oh. on the path of freedom. Are you talking about those 40 <laughs> acres and a mule? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Give us our 40 acres and give us our mule. Uh, and, and another thing is when America wakes up and apologizes to blacks in America, uh, I believe that far too long that we've been the labor workers uh, <laughs> and mm-hmm. not being rewarded. Uh, and, and America has benefited off the, black, off the backs of blacks. Uh, you know, blacks have invented things, invented all types of things, and we haven't gotten the credit yet. And I also yeah. agreed with that in the sense that our culture, you know, we are so assimilated into American culture that who we are and what we do and say and how all of that has become a part of American culture. Yeah. I see little stuff all the time, and I'm just like, I know where y'all got that from. They, they, they love our culture. They love our culture, they love but, our culture but, but they don't want to respect it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and but the main thing is, and, 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 and let's let's not get it twisted. I don't like to call it black on black crime. Crime is crime. But when we start respecting our own kind, I think then America will respect us. But then, t- I mean, well, what is that about? Because you know. We do talk a lot about how they treat us, but we don't talk about how we treat us. Absolutely. I believe that um, how we treat us is all a part of that system. The system of oppression, the system of uh, low income, you know, low low housing, low health care, you know, trying to make ends meet. You know, all kinds of things. But we have to uh, empower our communities first starting in the home. Because as the old saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. Yep. And once that child has been taught a certain way, it's a, it won't depart from it. And see, and that's where... Yeah, I agree with you because I I think that we should be looking at what's happening in our houses in terms of how our children behave outside. That's right. You know, and and, and, and stop letting the government run our households when we should be the ones running our households. Y'all should see both of our faces, okay? But Prophet Bryce, tell me, what do you see as your life's purpose? I mean, if you look at, you know, look at your life going forward and, and you're paying attention to all this stuff that's going on to us, us as a people, to us as Americans, when you think about what do I want to accomplish going forward? Do you have a sense of that that you can share with us? Um, going forward, if I can impact and save not only The millennials. Right. Um, is when I'll be satisfied. And, you know, even that's interesting because in a lot of ways you're different from your your generation in the sense that you believe in voting no matter what. Absolutely. I mean, even I heard when I heard your speech, you know, uh, the other day, you know, that was one of, one of your points. You know, and, and many millennials are saying, hmm, Vote now, it don't, it, don't, it don't matter. My vote don't count. They gonna do what they want to do anyway. You well, know. We, we got to understand that our vote matters. If we look at what uh, the Supreme Court just did just a few days ago. The Supreme well, Court did something that has never been done in this in this country's history. And tell us what that is. And that was to declare whoever wins the popular vote. Would be our president, and that's what should have been happening all along. 
Okay, when well, we got this orange thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, and even think about what MLK, you know, who you brought up, or what they all went through just for the right to vote. And then now we're saying, hmm, I don't think it matter. But we have to understand, it was the women who led that, 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 that way. It was the women who got the right to vote for the things of that nature. What do you mean? It was the women who led the charge. We did? Yes. Uh-oh. Oh, God, yes. So women have a, a vital role. Even today. Even today. Yeah. You know. Hmm. Because it's not only it's not only men that are being uh, it's not only men that are being shot and killed by women. Yeah. It's over 100 and something days, and we still haven't got justice for Breonna Taylor. But nobody's making noise about that. You understand? It's so, so yeah. We, 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 we've got we've got the, the certain dynamics. We got women. But you, we don't hear much about, you know, women and, and, you know, and this, as you're saying, you know, right now it's all about you black men, just, you know, all, y'all can't breathe, you know, this or that. Well, it's our black women that can't breathe either, uh, if you really want to be frank. <laughs> you know, and I'm, and speaking of being frank, I'm really interested in what you think about the black church today. I mean, do you, because one thing that I, I, I hear a lot from pastors is that they feel like they're losing y'all's generation and y'all don't come to church. And it's true. Like whenever I, and I don't go that much, but whenever I go, I don't see that many millennials. I see, you know, middle-aged people and little small kids who got dragged there by their parents. So I'm just wondering, do you, why do you think that is? Is it because a black church needs to change or is it because you millennials got something else on y'all minds other but, than? Well, well, Okay. There must be a sense of relevancy that comes to the black church and in the black community that will draw, uh, as you say, millennials yeah. uh, to the church. Because most of y'all are going to, like, you know, Christ Fellowship and, you know, these places that are more viral, you know, that y'all know, you know, it's going to be over in, an, you know, exactly at an hour or whatever, you know, then, you know, then at these, you know, black churches that are still the same as they were you know, when we were slaves. Absolutely. They really are. I mean, even that call and response and all of that, that got started then, you know, when the, the people in the pews didn't know how to read. Absolutely. So, but you do, you think the black church needs to it, change. It, it, it needs revamping. Yeah. But you need leaders who are in the time or have a uh, relevant mind to better push, push the church forward. Yes, like Prophet Bryce Graham. <laughs> Would you be Would you be interested in pastoring a church though? Well, or? Not, not, not right now. Not right now. Not right now. No, because you got to go outside and and, <laughs> and not listen, not with your fist in the air, but right. with the, with the Bible. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. We've only got a few more minutes left, so give everybody uh, let everybody know how they can reach you, uh, Prophet Bryce, uh, if they want to talk to you or find out what you have coming up. Oh, on all social media platforms. You can <laughs> of course, he's a millennial. <laughs> Oh. But it's at Prophet Bryce. So all of those outlets you can reach me. And uh, yeah, stay stay plugged in. And so anything coming up that we need to know about? Are Absolutely. you going to be? Absolutely. Uh oh. Um, August the 28th, the Mass National Network and those will be in Washington, D.C. for the 28th anniversary, for the 57th. The 57th anniversary. And that's your team doing that, um, uh, National, National Action Network. So if people want to get information on that, they'll go directly to nationalactionnetwork.com. 
and it's spelled out National Action Network. Yeah, spelled out. Okay, dot com. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I saw that um, <laughs> the um, the the tagline was "Get your fuck off our necks," yes. and so it's connected to to this yes. to George Floyd and, George and George other Floyd. matters. Interesting. Okay. All right. So, um, and and how do people if they if they do? I guess there is there a, like travel packages available for that or. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, uh, half of the hotels that are uh, there in Washington, D.C. are already booked. So in. expensive, yes, and uh, so expensive. And, and expensive. Yes. Uh, so uh, if you're going to make plans, make the plans expeditiously uh, because I don't know uh, what it's going to look like afterwards. Right, but you're gone. I, I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be speaking, Prophet Bryce? No, I won't be speaking, but I'll be, I'll be in attendance. All right, cool. Um, and you know, the other thing that you're doing is, um, you're selling t-shirts. Absolutely. Tell us about those while we got, I think we got two minutes. Uh, the t-shirts uh, are part of the movement. Uh, I got, uh, all types. Uh, you can go on my Facebook, Instagram. Uh, and the shirts say things like. Get your knee, uh, get your foot off my neck. <laughs> All, yeah, and and they're all black, all black shirts black. with with, with clean writing. Yes. yes. Okay. And then if they want to get a shirt, they can contact you the same. Is there a telephone number they can call or? Yeah. My telephone number five six one seven five five eleven ten. Again five six one seven five five eleven ten. Eleven ten. Simple to remember. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, very good. So is there anything else that you wanted to share before we leave, Prophet Bryce, no, about done. your your wonderful life no, at such a young it. age? Yeah, come with all the dynamics. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing I didn't ask you, and I'm going to ask you, um, do you have a favorite scripture as we close? I think my favorite Wow. And you know who else knew that? <laughs> Miss Jillian. Wow. And I had never even heard of it. Oh, that's a, that's a shame. Open the Bible once in a while. Okay. <laughs> we can go to church right now. Well, thank you guys, everybody, for tuning in. We're just finishing up with uh, Prophet Bryce Graham. God bless him for all of his hard work in the hood and in the church. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in to Coco Chats with me, Marion Dozier, your host. And thank you, Miss Jillian, for being on our team as well. Oh, I have a scripture for you. Oh. My favorite scripture. You ready? Yes. Uh, uh, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together as un in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head, even Aaron's head, that ran down to his beard that went down to the skirts of his garment as the dew of Hermon even the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion for there the Lord uh, commanded life even forevermore and I did it in a few seconds wow